Somebody praise God in here. Amen. Amen. He's worthy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Marsh is just moving along, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Amen. God has given us another opportunity to come into his house and to hear from heaven. Amen. God is good. I uh, heard a quote this morning, or this week, and I want to share it with you. It goes like this. I have learned three lessons this year. To lead people where they're at, accept situations for what they are, and not every action needs a reaction. Amen. 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 Not every action needs a reaction. I like that last part. Because we are so reactionary mm -hmm. to everything around us. And we need to know how to react. Reaction is good. Mm -hmm. But we need to know how to react correctly. Amen. Uh, yeah. uh, Satan wants us to react another way. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants us to re react in fear when things happen in our life. So today we're going to be talking about stop riding a wave through life. A lot of us are riding a wave through life. Sometimes we up, sometimes we're down. You know, we ought to get get even keel. Amen. And evil just stay on the same plane. Amen. And it's 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 it, it, it's rough sometimes because we're still learning ourselves. Amen. I, I I don't care how old I get. I'm still learning more about myself and more about this life. Amen. Amen. And don't feel like you're. You're being, uh, 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 you're being pointed out. Uh, all of us go through stuff. Yeah. None of us are exempt right. from going through some stuff. You know, never think that your problem is harder than somebody else's. No. Like we always say, you know, you want some shoes so bad until you meet a man with no feet. You know, right. how important to have shoes now, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you think his problem is? Right. Um, so the theme is... Steps to functional faith. We talked about faith last week. We talked about it in some detail. And I want us to really look at something uh, that can affect our faith. Because many believers uh, are not operating in functional faith. you got faith because God gave you. He saved you. You know, he, you know, he, you were saved by grace through faith. So... Grace is a gift, and faith is a gift. He gives us the ability to believe Him. But a lot of our faith is not functional. So today I, I hope to concentrate, and we hope to concentrate, and look at how our faith can be functional. Because just because God gives us a gift of faith, that don't mean nothing to the enemy. Remember, He came to kill, rob, and destroy. And He wants to take that away from us. So we must look at one particular thing today uh, that he attacks the most. You know, he wants the souls of men and women. We know that, right? That's his main focus. Because if he gets the soul, then he can puppeteer us. He can operate in us and through us. Amen. Not so much through us because we have the Holy Spirit. But if we're deceived and we don't understand that we, if we stay in this certain state, this state that I'm trying to explain is, if we stay in a state of functioning by our emotions then we're in trouble so we must look at the believer today and the believer's emotions amen amen, amen. you know we uh, uh, we did define faith faith is a strong belief in God amen uh, it's complete trust or confidence in someone or something Remember last week we talked about Mark 11, 22. Jesus told his disciples, have faith in God. So that's me and you. We've got to have faith in God. We as believers down here on this earth, got to have faith in God. Amen? Amen? We looked at Hebrews chapter 1. 11, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 11, verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance. Remember the word substance? It's another word for assurance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So we have an assurance now, what we're hoping for, that's going to happen. Because you notice the first word he uses, now. 
Now in this present tense. I am now standing here, but now if I stand here, now I'm standing here. Amen? So now is always present tense. So faith is something that's present tense. If we, if we understand it and look at it that way. Now faith is the substance or the assurance of things that we're hoping for. The evidence is not seen. So I don't have to see it. Amen? Jesus said we last said last week and he told uh, 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 Dalton Thomas, he said, Blessed are those who don't see and believe. Amen? So a lot of things that we are hoping for in our life at this very moment, we don't see it, but we hope for it. We don't, we don't see it, but see, faith is assurance that you have it. Whoa, did y'all see that? Amen. Now faith is a, it's a whole new different realm. It's a realm where God wants us to walk in. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You know, any, the enemy spends so much time on focusing on church, the people in the church, not hearing the word of God. Because he knows if they hear the word of God, it's going to give them faith, and he's going to be defeated. More about that later. Amen? Now, we read that also in uh, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 6, which was very important. He says, now faith, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So our concentration is pleasing God. Amen. It's pleasing God. Not ourselves, but God. We were saved by God for a purpose. Not to go off and live and do our own thing. That's what the world is doing. Yeah. They're going about to establish their own righteousness. This is the way I feel as though everything's going to be all right, but not according to God's knowledge. Paul was praying for them in Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. He said, I pray for Israel that they be saved because they're going about to establish their own righteousness, but not according to the righteousness of God. So we can't just go out here. He didn't save us because we can just do anything we want to do. That's why things ain't happening for you right now. Because you're still, you're still caught up in you. You're going to be all right. Just give you to God. Yeah. It's a great exchange. God says, look, I give you my life and you give me yours. Come on. Mm -hmm. Once we understand that, God, here, I take your life and here's my life. Because this is messing me up. Jeez. So I'm going to give it to you. Amen? Amen? He says, now it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the first thing we got to look at, we got to look at this verse, and it says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. All right? In other words, not my will, but your will be done. You see? That's what we got we to see it that way. It's impossible to, to please the Lord without faith. It's, it's not our will, but his will. We got to understand that. Well, faith ain't going to work. It has to be his will. Amen. 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 He says, Our Father who art in heaven, I'll be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. That's all that matters. His will be done. You see? Because there's a way that seems right in a man's, but that man's eyes, but the inner of his death. He think he's, you know, you, you, you know what? It's so sad that people gain all these things in the world. And at the end, they're never happy. They're missing something. Remember, we used the famous verse. We've been saying it for the last couple of weeks in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. God has placed eternity in man's heart, and only he can satisfy. Nothing out here is going to satisfy you but God, because God has placed a divine purpose in you and me that only he can bring about. So man is looking for love in all the wrong places because God is love. So great is he, love, that is in us than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen. So the next thing we got to realize in that particular verse in Hebrews 11, verse 6, we must believe that God is. Who is God? You know, eternal, you know, people say they have eternal life, but eternal life and, and quoting the Romans, uh, 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 not Romans, John 17, 3, he says, eternal life is this, that you know God. That no, know, that know there is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, like an intimacy. You know God. You know, John knows 
some of y'all, but I don't know some of y'all. <laughs> like some of y'all know some of y'all. Amen. Some people you know and some people you don't know. You know of some people, but sometimes when you get to know some people, you, you wish you never known them. <laughs> Amen? So, you know, when the Bible says the first commandment, love that God with all the heart, soul, and mind, everything that you have, you know, he means that. That's the first commandment. Once that happens, you're beginning to really understand what it is to know God. Because if you don't know God, there's no eternal life. We just said it. Eternal life is to know God in an intimate way. You know what I mean? I know this God. A lot of people say, well, I know Michael Jordan. No, you don't. <laughs> but to know God is to rest in God. Like, okay, you know your parents. When, you know when you went to your parents for something and they comfort you? Mom, I'm hungry. Dad, I need this. And they provide it for you. You didn't think about where they was getting it, how they got it, when they got it. Amen. All you was worrying about, it was coming. Amen. And that's the kind that, you know, that we ought to have, the love we ought to have for this God who knows all about us. If he knows all the hairs on my head, you know what I mean? He knows what we need. Amen. So why not have faith in him? So we got to believe that he is. And the third thing it says is he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now we got to do something about this. You want, you want God to open up some doors for you? Show him that you love him. You know? Amen. The Bible says, and I believe in Matthew 5, it says the Beatitudes, remember them? That one says, uh, Blessed are those who hunger and, uh, and search after righteousness, listen, shall be filled. The Bible says in Psalms 37, 4, Delight thyself for the Lord, and he shall give you desires of your heart. So when I, and you and I start showing God some attention, yeah. amen? amen, start putting him first. Watch God just blow up in your life. He's going to manifest. It's going to be so happy. Amen? You're going to be so blessed. Mm. Amen? amen? So we got to see that. The condition is we've got to know God, he says, in that, that, that John 17, 3, to know God, eternal life is to know God and his son. Yes. He tells us to pick up a cross and follow him. Yes. So we've got to know this Jesus. Galatians chapter 1 tells us about, 6 through 10 talks about following a false Jesus. You know what I mean? People are following a false Jesus. Just some of them follow this Jesus and think he's going to give them everything they want. Ain't going to be no pain, ain't going to be no suffering, ain't going to be no tri tribulations. Acts 14, 21 says, he confirmed the souls of the disciples. We must do much tribulation, enter to the kingdom of God. So we got to go through stuff. What is the reason for tribulation? What is the reason for going through some things? To get rid of some baggage that we don't need no more. Amen. The Bible says that you, if you in Christ, you're a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, new things come. And the new things are of God. So we in Christ, old things are going to pass away. Amen. We got to get rid of some of these baggage. Some things we ain't going to take to heaven with. Mercy. We better get rid of them now. Because yeah. they ain't getting in there. You ain't never seen nobody die. And, oh, what happened to them blue shoes? They took them. <laughs> that was their favorite pair. No, they didn't. It's in that house somewhere. You, you came naked and you leaving naked. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And he's a, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The word diligent means you are persistent. You're careful. You know, you're, you're, you're careful. One who doesn't give up so soon is a person who is diligent. You know, a lot of us just give up so soon because, we, we like I said earlier, we're talking about, you know, people living this life like a wave up. One minute you're up, one minute you're down. It's like, you know, uh, uh, um, we got to realize that we have to be active and not inactive, yeah. not passive. You know what a passive person is? A passive person is one who just gives up. There, you ever heard of the word dasa? Mm -hmm. That's like sweetness. It's like a, a soft. You know what I mean? You, we, the Bible says, do diligently seek him, not the ones who's docile or the ones who's passive. 
We gotta, we gotta show some emotion and some, some, some vigor, some eagerness. I'm tired of living like this. God, you say you just trusted you. I'm, I'm gonna trust in you then. What the, what the prophet say? Lord, I ain't gonna let you go until you bless my soul. He wrestled with that angel, right? Look, bless me. Don't leave me. We gotta start showing some attitudes. We show more attitude in a sense, or more emotion in a sense, when the enemy's attacking us and we give up so soon. We do. Oh, come on, man, get out and do something. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, we got to know God in an intimate way, closely, acquainted, emotionally, intellectually, experimental, and spiritual. Amen. So we just start, can't just be a hearer of the word and not a doer. We got to do this thing. And God gives us the ability to do it. Why? Through faith. Amen? Through faith. So why do so many suffer and fail? And having, uh, have, why so many suffer and having faith in God? Remember we talked about weeks ago uh, the components of the soul? Now there's many components, but I'm going to focus on these three. And we said this a couple weeks ago, maybe months ago. It says emotions, the mind, and the will. Remember we said emotions tell us what? How we feel. All right? Our mind tells us how we think. But our will tells us what we want. See? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what does Satan do? Since the soul is the main error that he attacks, and the soul, and that part of the soul, uh, the emotion part, is more complex than anything about us. It's complicated. Seriously. Because one minute we can be up, one minute we can be down. Like a wave. You know, some people just like, you know, just like a light switch. Just keep flicking off and on. They just change their emotion. Like, what is wrong with you? Y'all see people like that? They just change everything that comes. They change it. To what they, they react. And everything. remember, everything that is an action doesn't have to have a reaction. We gotta be able to understand why. Why is this thing happening? Amen. We react so much to things. So if that is the trick of the enemy, you're talking about a most powerful dart that the enemy uses. Jesus. He works on the rim of our emotions, man. Mercy. And a lot of this is where this is where believers. This is when when you when you operating under a, a believer and you operating so much by your feelings, you're most likely 100% carnal. You're a Christian, but you're carnal. You're, you're operating by the flesh. But God wants us to come above that, amen, and walk in a realm where our feelings don't, you know, have control of us, but we have control of our feelings. Remember, one of the gifts of the Spirit is self-control. Sometimes you want to go off with an emotion, you got to say, oh, cool, let's go, hold up, what's going on? What's going on? Who's, what's causing this? This is a one area that we 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 gotta understand because it's you know it, it is sad to see believers so caught up in emotion. You know, that's why well, I don't feel like it today. What do you mean you don't feel like it today? I don't feel like eating. I don't feel like eating this month. See, watch what happens to you. <laughs> watch what happens. You ain't gonna be around here too long. Amen. So we're going to really concentrate on the uh, believer and his emotions. I want to ask you guys a question. Uh, uh, what does it mean when someone says a person is soulless? That, that they're, they're, they're soulless. Cold-blooded. Cold. Yeah, cold-blooded. Uh, uh, it, it, relates, it relates to the soul, mm -hmm. the mind. It, it's, it's, it's not spiritual, is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of believers are walking in a soulless realm. We're going to find out today that a lot of churches and a lot of preachers stay in this area because it keeps the people happy. It keeps the checks coming in. Come on now. You know, they don't want to step on nobody's toes. But they forget the verse where it says the blood's going to be on your hands. You better tell them what it is and tell them the truth. 
Amen? God is good. Listen. Mm. Remember the Bible tells us that those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It didn't say nothing about worship him in, 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 in your mind, out of your mind, but by your spirit and in truth. In other words, by your spiritual man, your new man, that's how we worship this God, because that was upon the spirit of spirit. Amen. Remember in that, uh, John 3, where it's capitalized, the first one is capitalized. Those who worship me, those who worship me in spirit is, is Holy Spirit, and the small one is, is spirit, it's is the human spirit. So that's how we worship him spiritually. We don't worship him through our, through our, 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 our soulless nature. Why? Because that means that we're leaning on our own understanding. And he tells us not to do that. He says, Lord, your ways acknowledge him. Amen. Over here. Amen. 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 So many believers are powerless to overcome their natural life. If they fail to experience additional deep work brought on by surround, uh, surrounding to the Holy Spirit's lead. In other words, what I'm saying is, if we don't allow the Spirit to lead us, what's going to happen is we will remain carnal. We will remain fleshly. We remain having the enemy just taking our emotions and doing whatever he wants to do with it. You know? He knows what makes you mad. He knows what gets on your skin. So he's going to concentrate on that. And you know you ain't got no business going to some emotions and allow some of them to get you because what's going to happen to you? It's going to get you out of place. Now later on, then you're going to be, oh, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Come on. Why did I do it? Well, check it out. Examine these things. Why am I acting like this? In other words, I ain't letting you do this to me no more. Come on now. You know, certain people, you know, you already got it fixed in your mind right now. When you get around them, they get on your nerves. Come on now. It's your mind's already setting at it in that emotion. If they take you too far, you say, that's it, I had enough, it's over. Attack, attack, attack. But don't even let it bother you. Come on. This is the rest, this is the fight. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Remember, Satan's going to attack that emotional realm because he knows it's the weakest. Amen? Amen. Let's look at some of the functions of the emotion, of our, our, our emotional, emotional state. And there's a lot. I'm just going to name a couple of them. Uh, feelings, joy, happiness, sorrow, grief, compassion, kindness, pride, fear, hate, cheerfulness, uh, um, excitement, elation, stimulation, anxiety, Coldness, zeal, affection, confusion, expectation, remorse. That's a lot. That's a lot. And we all have those things in us. But we got to understand them. They can't have us. Come on. They can't have us. How many times do you accuse somebody of something because of the way you feel? And you find out they didn't even have nothing to do with it. And most of the time, you don't go back and say, I'm sorry. Come on now. Amen. Well, they did it. That's why they did it, because that's what they do all the time. <laughs> and they're not even around to defend themselves. But you're putting all these things on these people, think they've done something to you, and ain't done nothing. And a lot of times, we do it to ourselves. Because we've been thinking, remember Jesus said, take no fault. Because we're thinking things that we think why stuff is happening to us. I'm going to say that again. We, we think things that's happened to us, and we're taking these thoughts, and we're accepting them like this. it's reality. Remember? Cast down imaginations. Whoa! We said imaginations have become a reality. That's bad. When the imagination, cause that's, that's almost, you're almost ready for the white jacket. <laughs> Your next step you keep it up is the white jacket. That ties up in the back? <laughs> you start thinking that, oh, I see hell, a pink, pink elephants. Nobody sees them but you. <laughs> Come on now. Emotions involve such a large part of our soul. Amen? Uh, this is the main reason why Satan wants uh, the souls of men. Because that part of our soul, the emotion part, is, is complicated. 
And this is why Satan has so much success in blinding us, blinding those who believe not. Now, we believers. Now, we, we so that means we, we see. But we, we walk around and act like we don't see. Because we have not surrendered to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we have not diligently seek the Lord. And we, you know, we got to believe that God is God. And He's a reward of those who diligently seek Him. We got a part to play. Amen. 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 Listen. Mm. Satan has been so successful in deceiving many. Why are so many believers defeated by the enemy? Remember we said man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that goes that by the mouth of God. Many haven't totally yielded to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. They haven't. You haven't yielded to it. We say things, amen, praise God. But, you know, Satan's going to find out, do you really mean that? Do you really, uh, you know, amen means I agree. I accept. So, we got to understand that, that uh, uh, um, the, the Spirit is here to guide us and to lead us into all truth. That's his job. Now we got to follow him. How many here is born again? Everybody. All right. Everybody born again, right? Yeah. But did you know, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, 23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God which liveth from the body forever. So in other words, it's a whole lot of incorruptible word. You see that? It's a whole lot, it's a lot of corruptible word, but it's a whole lot of incorruptible word, which is the word of God. So, can you confess now that you know all the word of God? No. If we say cast out imaginations and every hard thing and draw stuff against the knowledge of God, do you know all the knowledge of God? No. Well, we better get busy on knowing something because that's part of our armor. Remember, take the shield of faith, was able to quench all the fiery darts of what? The wicked. Where are the fiery darts? Well, you know, that person gets on your nerves, and here they come. So you better sell yourself, you better get your mood right, and all of a sudden, they take you when you start boiling, and you start fussing, and then you start going overboard. But you let that happen. You let it happen. You let it happen, because you'll have control of that emotion. That's the gift of the Spirit, self-control. See, Satan, if, see, if once Satan got us in this wave, living, up and down, up and down, man, you ain't never, you can't be stable. A double-minded man is unstable. Also. How can a person be stable? I mean, I wouldn't want to be around a person all of a sudden they change and from that mood to that mood. I, oh, hold up, something's wrong with that person. Amen? Amen. Get too many amens on that, but it's the truth. Amen? Satan knows the word is life for the believer, so he attacks man to remain functioning from his emotions instead of his spirit man. See, Satan knows this. That's why he attacks our emotions. That's why he wants to stay in a certain, you know, here's cause things that happen. Remember, every action doesn't cause for a reaction. You know? I, you know, it's, uh, and I'm not just saying these things. I I experience them because I'm a human like you. You know, some of you might think I'm not human. I hope you, I'm human. And I go through some of the things that you go through in that. And, you know, when I'm dealing with certain things, my mind can go off, why are they doing this? You know, you, you ask somebody to do something, they don't do it when you want them to do it. And they never get around to do it, but they're going to tell you they do it because we say man's word is important. You know what I mean? But they don't keep their word. Come on now, somebody. Amen. Now you're thinking, well, you, you, I keep my word and I don't keep that word because you ain't them. They don't know why they don't keep their word. Some people just say stuff just to compensate. Come on. But my job ain't to worry about, you know, how they're thinking. That's impossible trying to figure out why they did that. I don't know. All my important thing is, is that we know why we do it. Yeah. And why we don't do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? We gotta know thyself. See, that's one thing about this whole life is coming to Christ, is that, you know, once you, you know this God, you become comfortable with yourself. Your flaws. Yeah. 
your mistakes. I don't care if nobody don't, don't like it. I don't, you can't be concerned with that. God knows who, he, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. 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 Listen. Preachers, churches, many have been functioning from the realm of the emotions more than the realm of the spirit, which causes many believers, watch this, to be deceived by Satan. Thinking that they're serving God, this is important, or worshiping God, but express more self-worship. Now, self-worship is the same thing as idolatry, worshiping an idol. Now, this idol happens to be us, yourself. Once you, you, you know, uh, 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 Satan wants us, that, what the, this, is, uh, this is, I took this uh, uh, information. Self-worship is the world's fastest growing religion. You hear me? Man, everybody thinks that, you know, it's all about me. Come on now. They don't know that they got to stand before a living God and give an account. Oh, my goodness. I once, I once what you know, I thought about that. Well, if I have this and I have that and I have this, my whole concentration was on having things. So now I'm, I'm with everybody else. I'm in the, I'm in the know, you know. I, I got it going on. Uh, if you're chasing a life like that, you are headed for a dead end. Eighty-four percent of Americans believe that enjoying yourself is the highest goal of life. Come on now, living my best life. You know how we feel about that. If this is your best life. Your next life must be hell. <laughs> right? If this is it, oh my goodness. Ecclesiastes, remember 12, 13 says, Let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We were created to what? Fear God. Worship God. Not ourselves. Not ourselves. This is why, you know, a, a lot of Christians are caught up in emotions because Satan wants to keep you there. Because he knows if you if you just step out of yourself and start really relying on God and trusting on God and really seeking God, dealing with it, he knows, he knows, he has no more ties on you. He can no longer trick you. A lot of us just walking around, you know, going by our feelings, la da da. We need to settle that wave, man. Yeah. Peace be still. Yeah. We need to get to a place where we, you know, because, I listen, going up and down ain't cool, man. It brings ulcers, headaches, stress. It could lead to heart attacks. Huh? I mean, you could really hurt yourself. You could really hurt yourself. It's like, why did I respond to this? Why didn't I respond to this? Take a person who in love with somebody. This is how fast the emotions can change. You in love with somebody, and they really do your own. Now that love turns to hate, and I want to kill them. Just that quick. Amen. Sure. Come on. Amen. Just that quick. And they do. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you didn't. You 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 did something wrong. You know. We got to control the most. Now, what caused that person to do that? That's why forgiveness is so important. Because it wasn't for the grace of God, they go on. I, I, I now I know why he says we ought to forgive seven times seventy. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Because we, we're in a, a perpetual state of forgiving and asking for forgiveness. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. Praise God. So why do you think why Satan is so successful in deceiving the church? God said, my people, watch this, perish for lack of knowledge. And that's true. People are perish for lack of knowledge. They're perishing for lack of knowledge. Um, he said in Peter, Peter, 1 Peter, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So it's got to be desire, same like a diligence. Same family. Desire, diligence. Seek. You know what I mean? Strive. Some kind of, this is the action he wants. And this, this is when we break Satan's stronghold from our lives when we just respond you know, by the unction of the Spirit. 
You know, Nike got a, had a slogan that's been that's powerful for years. Just do it. Some believers are just serve God. Believe in God. Trust God. Look, all the other stuff you don't trust the Lord. Where it get you? Emotional wreck. Emotional wreck. Amen? Listen, Ephesians 4.14 says, Many are tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. Many churchgoers don't even know who they labor among. What type of lives do their leaders really have? Why did I say that? Because, you know, you come to church and, you know, when the, when the Lord is addressing the seven churches of Asia Minor, he's talking to, when he says the angel of the church, he's talking to the pastor. We pastors have a responsibility as overwhelming. As we in Hebrews, and Hebrews 13, 17 tells us that, you know, I must give an account for your soul. So I got to give you real soul food. Not cornbread and, and ham hocks, <laughs> but soulful word for your soul. Understanding your emotions, amen. Yes. Realizing that you can put your emotions in check. Don't go off at the handle all the time. Something happens. Yeah. Satan likes a person. Y'all listen. Yeah. Yeah. He likes a person just to be all over the place, man. Mm -hmm. And this is why he's been so successful in these churches. Explain to you why. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, he said, I, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but, listen, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I fed you with milk and not meat, because there's much strife and division among you. You are acting carnal and walking as mere men. So we ain't supposed to be walking. We ain't supposed to be up and down like the world. We're supposed to have some self-control. Come on. Amen. And, and y'all know that Satan will, if you're in a relationship, he will pick one of, one of each other at each other. You know that. He's not going to stop because you get a little bit of word. we got to start mixing this word with faith and walking in it. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Lord have mercy. Listen. Mm. I believe, now this is just my belief. Y'all can agree with me, you don't have to agree with me, but this is what I believe. You know, you have all kinds of denominations out here and all kinds of things. You have, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, anyway. What I'm trying to say is, you. I think every church should be a word church. Word believing church first. Amen. I tell you, that's, what, that's my belief. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, because um, you've got a lot of denominations. They teach what what the denom denomination teaches. But my Bible tells me in 1 John chapter 2, verse 26 and 27, it says, Beloved, uh, uh, let no one deceive you. Or let no, no man deceive you. He said, you have an anointing which is in you, and you need no man to teach you. What's that anointing? That anointing is the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. So I might be up here standing, teaching you, but I'm using information and material. I'm just a vessel. I'm like a cup. You know, you pour it in, you pour it out. I'm just a vessel. It's not coming from me. It's coming from Almighty God. In order for me to do as well earth as in heaven, if he called me to preach his word, preach his word, not my word. Amen. My word ain't got no power. Come on, you, you go... You go, you tell the sun, you tell the water, peace be still, see what happens. <laughs> it's going to stop. <laughs> hey, but we got to believe, we got we to gotta trust God. Yeah. So, uh, uh, many, listen, it's sad to say many churches out here focus on feelings of the people instead of the fact of the word of God. But most, not all preachers, focus on giving the people what they like instead of giving them what they need. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need. Amen. Ain't no time saying, okay, God, you know, I, I think they need it. Uh-uh. I know what they need. I made them. You didn't make them. I know the hairs on their head. I know them. You just don't worry about it. Open up your mouth 
And he'll speak for you. That's how I operate. He'll speak for you. Because he knows what you need. Uh, uh, listen. Don't miss this. Uh, we talked about soulless. That's involving the soul. Do you know what soulless preaching is? I'm going to explain it to you. And you hear this a lot. Now watch this. Some of you probably know what it is, but you see it all the time. Turn the TV on. Some churches you know. Now some of them might get upset, but that doesn't bother me. Because I was raised in a church that was a soulless preaching. You know, folk come to church, don't even bring their Bible. As soon as the preacher gets to a certain point, they stand up. Go on and preach! <laughs> but, but away from the church, you see no evidence of a change. You see no fruit. And they thinking, being deceived all this time, that they worshiping God. But they're worshiping their feelings. Y'all understand? Here it is. This is, this is what you call soulless preaching. Compared to, uh, uh, compared to uh, spirit-led preaching. Soulless preaching is a type of preaching, watch this, which amuses and entertains and generally appears to many's emotions rather than being based on Scripture. Do you know a lot of all the churches out here just doing that? You know what I mean? I mean, you go in some churches. Somebody come in here and don't see no car. I'm out. You know what I mean? Y'all don't have a car. I can't come over there. Come on now. And, and, and the preacher, ain't, ain't he ain't walking up down the aisle. Come on now. He's not every time he's preaching here, drum roll from the organ or the, from the drummer. Huh. Come on now. <laughs> now the people, they, they, they on their feet. Come on, look, this is serious. They on their feet. Oh, go on and preach. Same people, you get outside, you bump into them. You with your girlfriend. Look, I don't know why she keep wearing that all the time. <laughs> That's not God. No spirit. See, this this. Uh, Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and they are life. So when you're giving the word of God, you're giving life. You're not giving the word of God, you ain't giving a lot. You ain't giving nothing. You're not giving anything. You're giving a feel good. You know, I don't want, look, I said something, something I heard today, this week. It says, I'd rather hear the preacher preach to me and, and, and get on me to have the Lord say, depart from me. You understand what I'm saying? Step on my toes. Smash them if you have to. I need to feel this. Because imagine over there. He said, depart from me. Oh, it's over. Ain't nothing you can do. But see, people want to make people feel so good. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 remember 2 Timothy 4 says this. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. People don't want to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. I used to say, well, ain't nobody listening to the messages. You know, Satan put that thought in my mind. Nobody, man, nobody want to hear that. You know, and, and he's right. It says, <laughs> the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust mm -hmm. shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away the ear from the truth and shall be turned unto men. Listen. I'm giving you all the truth because I love you. Amen. And I love myself. Because i got to give an account. Did you tell them what I said? God, you know. Go check, check the tapes. <laughs> Go check it out. Gave them the word. And that's what we need. Now, some of you right now are dealing with some emotional things in your life right now. And that's good because you're at a stage right now because the Holy Spirit's dealing with you. Because you, you at a, you at a place right now. I don't know where you are, but you're probably at a place right now that, you know, you realize that I cannot go any farther until I understand this. Because I'm tired of going through this. It keeps de defeating me over and over again. So let's get this right this time. Come on. Let's get it right. And some of you might seem distant from people. You might not hear you for, for, for a while, and you know, it was always a constant communication. But now God got you in the corner all by yourself. And he's saying, look, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do this thing right now. Look at this. 
uh, I heard this on Facebook uh, uh, about truth. And it says, so many people claim to want truth. Yet when they hear it, they just reject it. Mm -hmm. Jesus told, now listen, Jesus told the Pharisees, or I would say, those who rejected, that's your big brothers. He told the Pharisees in John 8, 45, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Mm -hmm. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. See? Jesus said the truth will make you free. Amen. It'll make you free. Yes. Some folk, believe it or not, don't want to be free. John uh, 3, 19 says, And this is the combination that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Now, if your deeds are evil, you ain't going to stay around this word too long. Amen. <laughs> it's impossible. It, it doesn't, you, you, you're going to say, oh, it, it's, it's going to be like acid thrown on you. The word's going to feel like that. But thank God you accept the word. Thank God you know a uh, uh, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word of a seed of the mouth of God. You understand that. You believe that. Amen? Amen. God is good. Listen. People are in churches for years and don't know anything. Sad to say, they don't know God. And that is dangerous. Amen? Look, true believers operate in this order. Watch this. Fact, faith, feeling is the correct order. Not feeling, Faith and never the fact. Here's why. Because you've got to take the fact of the Word of God. You take that fact of the Word of God, you take the faith that God gives you to believe the fact of the Word of God, and then you got to feel it. Amen. It ain't never the opposite. You don't wait around to try to feel good about something. Well, Lord, I'm praying for things that are happening good, but I don't feel nothing happening. Well, ain't nothing going to happen. You've got to know what's going to happen. Because that's what faith is. The substance of things hoped for. You've got to know what's going to happen. I, I thank God for the test he brought me in my life. Yes, Lord. I mean, test, I was like, Lord, why me? Why? I'm, I'm, I'm coming down with this. I'm, I'm serious. Why me? And I thank God that I had the, the, the notion from the Spirit to say, well, hey, do you love me? Like you told Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love Okay, I love you. I love you. Well, prove it. Believe me. This too shall pass. I believed it. It passed. And what that do? That just built my faith. That gave me more confidence in a God that I can trust. Are we here? Amen. 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 Watch this. Listen. Um, I think I said that already. The more, are, the more one examines their lives, they will discover that an emotional life is not dependable or reliable. <laughs> you hear me? Once you start examining yourself, you, 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 you can't go about living a schizophrenic life. You can't, nobody wants to be around you. You, you don't want to be around yourself no more. It's just like that, I don't know, is that a disease? Uh, uh, when somebody blurts out something without control? Could you imagine being around somebody like that all the time? I mean, what if everybody was like that? I mean, you'd be like, hold on, where am I at? Now, that's a sickness. I think it's, it's, it could be led by demons. I don't know. But to conduct our lives in a way where we don't have no control how we, you know, Conduct our life. Oh my goodness. That means Satan can do anything he wants to us. Lead us in any kind of way he wants. Are we here? Amen. So, uh, uh, um, when it's, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, tell, uh, 5 tells us, examine yourself whether you be of a faith. Amen. It's the constant looking at ourselves. James 1 tells us, uh, uh, well, this is a, uh, such a person who, uh, who doesn't frequently examine themselves, 
Watch this. Such a person who doesn't frequently examine themselves by looking to the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but, but a doer of the work. That man or that woman shall be blessed in his deed. So it's a, this is frequently we must examine ourselves. How we react. Remember, every reaction, every action doesn't mean a, it has to be a reaction. We got to really look at ourselves because there ain't nothing wrong that we're having emotions. Being a Christian doesn't mean you're emotionless. Y'all should have seen yourself when we was having testimony service and, and a, a, a worship service. Put a song on, amen. amen. God is all right, you know what I mean? You start, you start to move it? Come on now. Ain't no wrong with that. Some of us, oh no, I don't have to say that. See, this, I caught that spirit. Satan is slick. He keep on coming. You know, listen. Mm. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is having his way now in your life. When you, when he, when God slows you down, the Holy Spirit is having his way in your life to show you because he wants to teach you a lesson. He wants to teach you something. Can't keep living. This, this is, you know, we're talking about growth now. We're talking about growing up in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Question. When's the last time, listen, you asked for God's anointing to fall on you? Listen to me. Anointing is power. It's God's control. When was the last time you cried out, God, I want your anointing on me? Talked about the other week about Elisha and Elijah. Uh, um, uh, uh, Elijah asked Elisha, you know, before I depart, because he knows he's going to get caught up, he said, what would you like? And Elisha said, I want a double portion of your anointing. And it's sad to say some of us don't even ask for just a single uh, portion of anointing. What does anointing mean? It means to, it, it sets you apart. It, it's, it's like in a, you're in a power rim, rim. You are in a peace, peaceful place. Come on. You're in a peaceful place. And, and, and it's like, we, we, when the last time you cried out to God, and said, God, fill it with the Holy Spirit. All honor. All glory. All praise. Lord, I, I, I worship you. Amen? Spirit, Holy Spirit, fall down on me. Lead me and guide me. You really, I mean, you really showed emotion in that, in that area. God, just take control. I'm telling you, you ought to try it. You ought to try it. You ought to. I am so blessed that, you know, I listen to the voice of God. Seriously. I, I, I thank God that I heard his voice. Amen. Because everything he said to me in this book is true or coming to pass. He's not a liar. He tells us the truth. He is truth. He is the way. He is the life. Amen? Come on, y'all. Listen. Amen. Mm. Amen. This is powerful. I'm coming in now. Watch this. Romans 14, 17. I want you to turn there. Let's control those emotions. Come on now. Let's put them in check. Amen? 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 Amen. Glory be to God. Put him in check. But Pastor, you just don't know I'm tired. You know what I mean? I didn't get no sleep last night. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Hey, Amen. You don't go to, you don't get in your car and, and go to sleep, do you? <laughs> Come on now. You were in that car, you're going to get one destination to the home. Amen. You come here to hear the word of God. Romans 14, 17 says, listen. Now watch this. The kingdom of God. Now let me ask you a question. Look up. Where's the kingdom of God right now? It's in you. It's in me. 
Where the spirit of it is, there's liberty. That's the, that's, listen, the kingdom of God is not somewhere in observation like, say, Greenville, uh, Beverly Hills. It's in me and you. Greater is he that's in us. Hey, come on now. Thy kingdom come. See, it's in us by the way of the Spirit. Now watch this. 14, 17 is beautiful. He says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now see, that's the, now watch this. That's powerful because that's the kind of emotion God wants us to express. Right living, doing right, right? Once we do that, peace, man. That pass of all understanding, right? Now you got joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, you're just so happy. I mean, you're just so elated. You know, that's why when you, you hear your favorite song, you, a tear might come to your eye. Because you're relating to something that is relating to you. And it's bringing up the joy. It's bringing out where God has brought you. And now you, you can express this, this emotion that is good for you. Amen. Because it's joy and happiness and it's peaceful, peaceful and it's righteousness. You have no problems whatsoever. Because you are in the presence of God and nothing bothers you. That's the kind of emotion that God wants to stir up the most in us. Because that's where the kingdom is. That's when the kingdom is ruling and reigning in your life. When you walk in righteousness. And peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Mercy, Lord. That's what I'm telling you. That's what you got to get to. Yes, Lord. And you got to get there and stay there because Satan don't want you there. Right. Amen. He don't want you there. He wants you all over the place. The unstable, unstable man is unstable. I mean, uh, 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 what is it? A man who's unstable. He's, he's, he's double minded. A double, double thank minded. you, Joe. Yeah. If you're double minded, you're unstable. You gotta have one mind. That's on Christ. Amen. That's on his leadership. Amen. Not double-minded. Satan's constantly going psst, over here. Psst. Man, come on. Read the hand. I'm serving God. Amen. You gotta start taking charge of your life. You gotta start taking charge of your life. Listen. Mm. 2 Timothy 1 7 says, let's look at it. Y'all know we're coming in. 2 Timothy 1. Amen. Praise God. The kingdom of God is in you. It's in me. We got to stir up that gift that is in us. Come on now. Amen. You can't stir it up, listen to what the devil trying to get you in another emotion, emotion that ain't got nothing to do with you, like fear. You know? Well, he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but we constantly looking at it, believing it. Come on, look at, look at this here. Uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1, verse 7. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. Well, guess who gave it to us? Guess who's trying to give it to us? Right? Listen, but look what he gave us. He gave us a spirit of power and love. Look at that. And a sound mind. Didn't say double mind. It said a sound mind. Now, this is where we're supposed to live. We got to fight for, oh, the Holy Spirit is, you know, Holy Spirit is powerful. Because I was not thinking about this verse, but he's brought me heat on time. Amen. Go to Matthew 11. I, I, I believe it's 11. I'm fine, I want to get over there. Okay. Matthew 11. He didn't give the Spirit of fear, power, and love, and sound mind, right? 11. Did I say 11? Okay. All right. All right. Yep. He's right again. <laughs> Matthew 11. Look at verse 12. Mm, watch this. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, right now, the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Where well, it's about time we start getting violent and take back that peace and that joy of the Holy Ghost. That the kingdom of God brings us. Amen. This is what we got to do every day. 
This ain't just a one-time thing. Satan every day is trying to get us in this emotion and that emotion and feel this way and feel that way. Uh-uh. We gotta have a sound mind, man. We got the spirit of power and of love. This is what this is what we gotta, I'm telling you. Stop living a life of a wave. Up and down. It's not attractive. It's unstable. It's not who we are as believers. It's not who we are. And individually, all of us need to get by ourselves. Get away from your girlfriend, your buddy. Get away from everybody. Get with God. At least for 20 or 30 minutes. Just get with God. You can open up the book. Just get with God and say, God, help. Show me and mean it. Mean it just like if you're drowning and I got a rope and you see me. And I'm walking by the lake and I look at you. You don't say, help. Help me. <laughs> you say, yo, over here. I only got a couple of seconds. Throw down that rope. Come on. You got you to gotta show God that you're diligent. You want to be rewarded? Show him that you know him. Understand that you can't, you can't please him without it. Without faith, you can't please God. Amen. You got to believe that he is God and he's a reward of those, those that seek him. Amen. Show God that you love him. Come on, y'all. Show him that you love him. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Now, in closing, watch this. I'm going to read this to you. Watch this. Please don't, uh, upon discerning the truth of not living by feelings, mis mistake spiritual life as one without it. All right? In order to be spiritual, a believer must become exceedingly uh, 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 hard and void of affection. In other words, he don't want us to be robots. All right? I'm not talking about not expressing emotion. But understand the emotions that are that God that's from God. And emotions that's from our natural man. Come on now. Or the ones Satan's trying to use against us. It's not, man, you have you ever uh, your joy is a, a, is a beautiful emotion, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, we all have grieved. We all have sorrow. We all experience happiness, you know? But to experience an emotion like fear for days or weeks or years is a stronghold by the enemy. Because God didn't give it to you. He didn't give you that. Satan did. That's why we got to be aware of his devices. And all the fury darts of the wicked. Yeah. Amen? Amen? A spiritual saint is someone who displays of love which is greater than that of others. When you're walking in the Spirit and really trusting in God, not too many things are going to bother you. What people do ain't going to bother you. Amen. Huh? Hey, whatever. God, one for the grace of God, there go I. Amen. You can't make no, listen, you can't make nobody do nothing. Amen. How you going to make somebody do something you can't even do? Amen. We need the grace of God Amen. to overcome. Amen? Amen. Uh, the soul life means that we continue to de uh, deny natural powers and to walk by the power of God. It means to, no, the soul life means to live no longer after self. Amen? And his desires, but to submit to the will of God. Remember, to submit to God is the only way that anyone is going to resist the devil. You want him to flee? They got to submit to God. Amen. Amen. That goes across the board. So, what am I saying today about feelings? I'll wrap it all up. 
Ain't nothing wrong with feelings. But remember that that, that part of our soul is so complicated because there's so many feelings that we, you know, we, we deal with. Jesus. But we're understanding that the feelings don't have us, but we have them under control. Yes. Now, you're going to cry. You're going to get upset. You're going to do these things, you know. You're going to, this is going to happen, but don't have it control you. God placed them there for a real release because that's part of who we are naturally. But now we have a spiritual man, amen, that takes precedence over the natural man. Come on. Though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed day by day. This is the one he wants to come forth. I mean it when I say get, to your, get by yourself and praise him. I really mean that. Because in the next coming weeks, you know, we're going to touch on some stuff here. You know, ain't no time to be sitting on the sideline no more. Ain't no time to be cute no more. Seriously, we, we got to get out of here, man. You know? And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close with this. Some of us are so reserved when we come to church. Our team wins a game or a nice move we see. But thank you. Oh. We come to church. Come on, somebody. He's worthy to be praised. Once you show that sincerely, watch God manifest in your life like never before. Remember, nobody can do you like Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Amen.